It's been a year since Toronto Police launched a dedicated unit for missing persons. And that initiative followed criticism over the way the force handled missing persons cases here in the village, many of which eventually were linked to serial killer Bruce MacArthur. Well, now that missing persons unit now has a new tool at its disposal, thanks to new legislation from the province that police say will help them track down missing persons sooner. So this is our missing persons unit. Um, we have four officers that work out of this office. On the third floor of police headquarters, this tiny office is dedicated to the newly formed missing persons unit. We put pins in for each of the unidentified human remains cases that we have outstanding in Toronto dating back to the 1960s. Oh, wow. And uh, what we try to do on a regular basis is match up these unidentified uh, human remains to outstanding missing person cases. After the revelation of a serial killer operating in Toronto's gay village, TPS took heat for the way it had handled missing persons cases in the community. All eight of Bruce MacArthur's victims were men linked to the neighbourhood. An independent review on how cases are handled is currently underway, but in the meantime, the hope is this centralized unit can help spot trends and streamline investigations. One of the issues that we had in the past was if you had a, a missing person in a particular division or someone from an outside agency was found a person and was trying to identify where they're from, if they said they're from Toronto, they would have to call 17 different divisions to try and find out who that person is or, or if they're missing from that division. Now with our central location, we have an oversight of every case in Toronto. Until recently, detectives faced another barrier in trying to track down the last movements of a person reported missing. Unless there was foul play suspected in that person going missing, we could not obtain a court order to access those records, the last phone call made, banking records, when they last used their bank account or bank card and where what the ATM it was used at. Detective Sergeant Stacy Gallant says for decades it's been up to a company's discretion as to whether or not to give up customer information. But now, thanks to legislation introduced by the province on July 1st, police can pull records of anyone who falls under a newly created missing persons definition. We have used it on 11 separate occasions and in most of those cases we're still waiting for the the data or the information to come back. Uh, we have used it on one occasion where we have had success. And it helps find people. I'm all for it. The sister of one of Bruce MacArthur's victims says she doesn't know for sure whether police attempted to access her brother's records in the days after he went missing. She is welcoming this new tool. It was six months after Andrew Kinsman disappeared that he was identified as the victim of a murder. His family would later learn he was killed the day he went missing. Karen Coles believes if police had easier access to these documents, the families of other victims could have been spared a lot of heartache. Knowing that his credit card wasn't being used or that uh, his phone wasn't being used, then you would know right away that it's something very, very serious. Of course, there are concerns surrounding privacy. Officials say, though, there are rules in place to protect sensitive information. Yes, we have access to this information, but people must really understand that that information is only used for that specific missing person investigation, and that's it. We are not allowed to use it for anything else, and nor will we use it for anything else. Now, the city of Toronto averages about 4,000 missing persons cases every year, and there are currently more than 600 active cases and about 60 unidentified human remains.